All right, what's up everybody? Lucas here. This video is gonna be on abs, calves, abs, calves, and cardio. I'm just gonna go through, you know, my typical abs, calves, and cardio routine. You know, this is, uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, little accessory movement. So if you've seen my videos before, I've done like full body, we did chest, we did shoulders, arms. This is something a little different, a little, uh, uh, the accessory movements abs, calves, and cardio, the first thing, well, the first thing I'll say is, so for abs, we'll train them, um, you know, abs I'll do anywhere from like once to one to three times a week. I'll do it after my workout. If you see, I'm a little sweaty, we just got done training. I'll do it after the workout and I'll do uh, four to five sets and then that's it. So I think a big uh, misconception with abs is most people do, I think they do too much. They try to, you know, do like 20 or 30 minutes of abs, which is kind of unnecessary. I'm more of a believer in hitting it uh, less overall volume and then a little more frequently. Uh, same with calves too. Uh, also with abs though, the biggest thing is you don't get abs from doing abs. You get abs from lowering your body fat, decreasing your body fat through diet and cardio obviously. Now training abs will help the abs muscle, the ab muscles pop. So when you lose the body fat, your abs will stand out more. But you know, these people who do endless sets of crunches and wonder where their abs are, guys, you need to, you need to diet down to lose the body fat first. So that's always, Priority number one is lowering your body fat to reveal your abs. Uh, and then having said that, obviously training your abs will help them pop, like I said. So when you're at a low enough body fat, they'll stand out. Um, but all right, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna ramble on this video. So start with abs. I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna do a couple of different ab exercises. The first one is gonna be a staple in my routines and it's Swiss ball crunches. I got the Swiss ball right here. We're gonna do Swiss ball crunches, superset hanging leg raises. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, one set and then I'm gonna kind of talk a little more and explain uh, what exactly I'm doing. Okay, so that was Swiss ball crunches, superset hanging leg raises. So remember a superset is when you do two exercises back to back with no rest. So a little, uh, explaining a little, about, a little bit about what I'm doing here on the Swiss ball crunches, I'm not worried about going all the way up because that's gonna uh, take tension off the abdominals, off the abs. So it's just a very short movement and back down. And you can put your hands you know, on, your, on top of your head, across your body. Um, I kind of just put them like up over my head and that allows me to really focus in on my abs. And a key when you're training abs is you always wanna keep your abs flexed throughout. So you never want any moment where you're kind of uh, letting loose in your abs. You always want that tension, always wanna flex your abs the whole time during the ab exercise. And then we moved on to the hanging leg raises, um, where these, there's several different uh, apparatuses, machines. This one has the, the, the flat back. I've seen one with like the half ball too, kind of. But the idea is you're propping yourself up and you raise your legs straight and that's gonna target the lower. So the Swiss ball kind of targets your upper, hanging leg raises targets your lower. And I do like to keep my legs straight, but when you start to get fatigued, you can just raise your legs up um, and I'll do the next set. I'll just raise my knees up instead of raising them straight out, straight. So there's two ways of doing them. Uh, but this is a staple. You know, I've been doing this, this super set, Swiss ball crunches, or, or, or you can do crunches flat from the ground too, but crunch super set leg raise since I was like 17 years old. This has been a staple in my ab routine. And I'll typically do like three to four sets of this. Uh, rep range anywhere from 10 to 20 really. Uh, with abs, you do want to go a little, little higher reps, but you don't need to do endless sets and endless reps abs. Each rep should have a purpose, just like any other muscle. Okay, one more exercise, uh, exercise I wanted to show on the Swiss ball is Swiss ball oblique crunches. So regular crunches, obviously like, you know, work your front, center part of your abs. You also need to work your obliques, which is on the side of your body. But I think most people, um, the, the obliques is a very short movement and it's very simple. You just do a regular crunch, but then you just angle towards one way. I'm gonna show you an example. You can also do these on the floor too. I'm gonna show you how I do them on a Swiss ball. So these are Swiss ball oblique crunches. And then you can, you know, you can alternate sides. One rep like this, one rep like this, one rep like that. Or you can do all the reps on one side and then switch. But once again, it's a very short movement, so I'm not going like this 
You know, because if you go like this, then when you're at the top, you're resting, there's not tension on the muscle, not tension on your abs. So the idea is to always keep your abs flexed. Very short movement, like that. Okay, let's go on to my next favorite ab exercise. Okay, next ab exercise I'm gonna do is rope crunches. You know, this is a super popular one and I see a lot of people do it incorrectly. So I'm gonna show you uh, the correct form on this one. You wanna keep your back a slightly rounded, but as all as as with the other ab exercise, you want to keep your abs flexed the entire time, and the range of motion is is a little greater on this one because you do want to stretch up. But when you crunch down, you really want to keep your abs flexed and get a good crunch in your abs. Uh, but let me let me do a couple reps so you can see. And then with your hands, I like putting my hands. Every rope is going to be different length, but I like keep my hands slightly above my head, just like this. So uh, something I'm doing that you can't see is I'm trying to keep my back like flat. I'm not trying to, to, to round my back any when I do this. I'm trying to keep my back flat and my abs flex the entire time. Like I said, the rope, you know, it depends on, on the length. If, if you have a shorter rope, you can grab it at the ends. With this longer rope, I, rope, I grab it about halfway. Uh, so when I'm doing the exercise, my hands are directly above my head. That's rope crunches. Uh, this one I'll do sometimes. I'll, I'll prefer the, the Swiss ball with the hanging leg raises, uh, but this one is also a good one because you can add resistance. Uh, so I'll cover something else real quick. A lot of people will say, oh, you know, there, there may be low body fat, they may be lean, but they don't really have the abs, uh, the abs pop and they don't really have developed abs. So something you can do for that is you can do resistance exercises or add resistance to your ab exercises. Now, what does that mean? That just means add weight to your ab exercises, such as this. You know, you can keep adding weight, where if you're doing a Swiss ball crunch, there's no resistance, just body weight. So if you think your abs are underdeveloped, like if you're already low body fat, but your abs aren't popping, do a resistance exercise for abs, such as rope crunches. Okay, so I'm gonna finish with two more ab exercises. Uh, the first one I'm gonna do is, is a substitute for hanging leg raise. So if your gym doesn't have a hanging leg raise machine, you can do this one. So it's gonna target your lower abs as well. And it's just, you lay flat on the ground, put your hands under your uh, posterior, and you raise your legs up. So it targets, it's the exact same thing as hanging leg raise, except you're just doing it from the ground. So just like that. And like I said, that was same movement as the hanging leg raise like we just did. It's just if your gym doesn't have that machine, you can do that one. And the last ab exercise I'm gonna do here is bicycles, um, where you just raise one arm to your alternate leg. Uh, this one's a tricky one. You kinda have to get the coordination down, but this is another one you can do with no equipment, obviously, because I'm just doing these you know, from the ground. So let me do a few reps here, show you an example. So that's bicycles. You can kinda speed it up if you want to, but remember with abs, it, it, the idea is to always keep your abs flexed while you're training them and keep the time under tension there. You never want any point where the tension is off your abs. Keep them flexed, keep the range of motion short, and then keep your workouts nice and simple and short. Okay, let's go to calves. Okay, so for calves, I'll train uh, similar to abs. I'll do it after my workout a couple times a week. And for calves, we, we switch it up. So we'll do one workout where we'll do a standing movement, which is gonna target your gastrocnemius. And then we'll do another workout uh, you know, later in the week where we do a seated movement which targets your soleus muscle. Uh, so I'll give you examples of both and I'll show you a few of my favorite calf exercises. The first exercise I'm going to do is just a single leg calf raise. So a lot of, your, a lot of gyms don't have, um, and I know this gym here too, it doesn't have the standing calf raise machine. So I'm going to do standing single leg calf. And the, 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 the key on this one is you want to find something where you can elevate your foot or you elevate yourself high enough so you can get a good stretch down. So this is a pit shark, but you can do anything. You just want to get your foot elevated so you can stretch. So let me do a few reps here and then I'll explain what I'm doing. So what I was doing there is I'm performing the LBD double pump, which is just a double contraction. You'll notice when I press up, I'm flexing once and then I you know, flex even higher to go even higher. So that's, the purpose of that is there's no scientific reason. It's nothing special. It's just to drive more blood into the muscle. So it's going to get a better contraction. Um, a lot of people when they do calves just bounce up and down. They're not really working the muscle. They're working their feet. 
more than anything. So doing the double pump is just gonna help you get a better flex in the calf muscle, which is gonna drive more blood in the muscle, which is gonna inevitably make your calves grow. Uh, and then I like doing the single leg just because it isolates both sides and you can really focus on each, each leg. So one leg or so for one calf is bigger than the other. Uh, so this is standing single leg calf raise. Okay, so the second calf movement I'm gonna do, uh, the first one we, we targeted are gastroc nemius, which is the top part of your calf. The second movement I'm gonna do is seated, which targets your soleus. And I'm gonna use the same principle on this one as I did with the standing, standing calf raise. I'm gonna do the LBD double pump. So I'm gonna do a few reps here, uh, give you, uh, show you how to do the reps, and then I'm gonna talk a little more. Okay, so this is a seated calf raise. I'm doing the same LBD double pump. Uh, most gyms will have this machine, but if your gym doesn't, you can just sit in the bench, put dumbbells on your uh, knees and perform the movement. Uh, but once again, the seated calf, raise, we're, we're, seated calf raise works your soleus muscle. And you know, we'll do one day where we'll do standing calf raise, and then the next calf workout we'll do seated. So we'll do both. Um, and you can do both in the same workout, just switch it up, follow your plan and you're gonna have great results. Uh, but you know, calves are a lot genetics. You know, some, a lot of people, you know, dog me for my calves, my ankles, uh, the ankles, your wrist, that's genetics. You know, some people have big joints, some people have small joints. Uh, calves are a lot, a lot to do with genetics, but anybody can make their calves bigger through, you know, training and just getting, gaining muscle, uh, just like any other muscle. But if you don't, if, if you aren't born with great calves, you probably aren't gonna develop great calves. Like I'll never have awesome calves, but you can make any muscle bigger. You can make a calf bigger just like any other muscle. Uh, so this is a seated calf raise. I'm gonna do one more, one or more of my favorite calf movements. Okay, so the last calf movement I'm gonna do is just standing calf raise, holding the dumbbells. And I'm gonna do it on flat ground. I'm not gonna do these elevated, so it's gonna work your calf totally different. Uh, think of it as like a floor press or uh, uh, floor press where you just the range of motion is shorter but this one really works your uh, gastrocnemius again the top portion of your calf and there's no stretch at the bottom so you're just raising up and i love this one because you don't really need any equipment all you need is dumbbells uh, so i'm going to do a couple reps here and show you an example i would just call this one uh, standing calf raise with dumbbells and another thing so the biggest thing with calves is just when you're training it train it with purpose train it uh, you know intense but you don't need to do 20 sets for calves I personally just do four sets uh, three times a week. So that's what we do. We do calves post-workout three times a week, and then abs will do post-workout twice a week. So that's my personal ab and calf routine. I'm gonna do one more uh, set here. Remember with calves too, the biggest thing is the double pump. Really do the double pump uh, so you can get a nice contraction. And all, all it does is just drive more, blood, so mu drive more blood into the muscle. That's all it does. Well, so for cardio, I'm just gonna show you guys what I personally do. You know, if you're my client, I know this is the generic response that everyone loves, but follow your plan exactly for the best results. So I personally do list cardio, low intensity, steady state. So all that means is you're going at the same pace the entire time. And usually list cardio is a little longer, like it's anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes at a clip at one time. Um, obviously I'm not gonna do 30, 60 minutes. This will be the longest video ever and boring. I'm just going to show you an example of what kind of list cardio I like to do and really what I recommend too. So I'm doing it, well first for list cardio, I recommend doing it first thing in the morning, fasted before meal one. And all that means fasted before meal one is you wake up, do cardio, or you wake up, do cardio before you eat breakfast. It's not, I think people hear the word like fasted and get like, uh, they think it's, it's, it's intimidated. All it means you wake up, have some water, go to the bathroom, do whatever you gotta do in the morning, brush your teeth, and then don't go do cardio before you eat. So that's one time I recommend doing it, first thing in the morning fasted, or immediately post-workout. Those are the two best times to do list cardio, uh, or most really any cardio. Those are the two best times to do it. You're gonna burn the most fat during those two times. Uh, me personally, I've been doing a post-workout, just so I don't have to go to the gym twice. Um, and if you're, do, if you're doing your workout and cardio in one session, never do the cardio immediately before weight training. Always do the cardio post-weight training, post-workout. Okay. So for list cardio on the treadmill, I like to do, I know every treadmill is different, you know, every incline and miles per hour is different. But for the treadmill, on most machines, I like to do 6.0 miles per hour. 
And then, or no, excuse me, not 6.0 mile per hour. <laughs> Leave that in there. I'm gonna be running like uh, 6.0 incline. 6.0 incline. And then any, anywhere from two and a half to 3.0 miles per hour is what I do. Um, now, some people that maybe think, they think that's slow. I got bad knees. I tore both my knees. And I'm not trying to run a race. I'm not trying to do anything performance based. I'm trying to lose body fat. So, as far as losing body fat, your heart rate needs to be one anywhere from 90 to 120, nothing crazy. Uh, for list cardio, you should be able to pass the talk test, which is simply, you should be able to have a conversation while doing the cardio. Now, once again, this is what I personally do. This isn't necessarily what you should be doing if you're watching this video, uh, you know, and if you're my client, follow your plan exactly. But if it says list cardio, this is what I like to do for list cardio, just walk on a treadmill. Uh, you can also do the bike. You can also do elliptical. You can also do the Stairmaster, which I'm gonna show you right now. So for me, for list cardio, let's say I'm doing 30 minutes, I like to split it up. I'll do 15 on treadmill, 15 on the Stairmaster. So you can switch up the machines you're doing it on. They'll help you not get bored. Um, a lot of people when they're doing the list cardio, they'll say, oh, I'm doing 45 minutes. How do I stay? How do I not just get bored? Listen to music, watch TV, think about your goals. Like you can distract yourself. So, you know, back when I was competing, I would do up to, I've done three hours of list cardio a day before. And then when I was competing, I did like two hours for like 10 weeks straight. So just get it done. That's the idea. But treadmill, 6.0 incline, 2.7 miles per hour is what I prefer. And if you're doing a bike, you would just go to steady pace, elliptical steady pace. And by steady pace, I just mean you're not in flux and you're not sprinting at any point. You're not slowing down at any point. You're going the same speed, same speed throughout. So that's list cardio. Okay, so for me personally, my second favorite form of cardio is a Stairmaster. And every Stairmaster machine is gonna be different, just like the treadmill. Uh, but on the Stairmaster, you could actually do lists, low intensity steady state, or hit high intensity interval training. Uh, me personally, I like doing lists on the Stairmaster and I'll do, you know, half on the treadmill, half on the Stairmaster. And the speed you should go depends on that specific Stairmaster machine. Uh, this one, but in general, I'll do anywhere from like three to five, level three to five, but every Stairmaster machine is gonna be different. So I can't really give you a specific level to go, but now Stairmaster, it's the gauntlet. It's the, by far, the best cardio to do. Uh, but I'll personally split it up. You know, I'll do 15, 20 on the treadmill and then 15, 20 on the Stairmaster. One thing I did want to cover real quick on stairs is a lot of people will say, don't hold the handles or don't bend over, bend over like this. Um, the answer is obviously you, you want to keep your torso upright. I would never just not put my hands on. I'm going to fall off. I'm not trying to get injured. So be safe. And if you have to bend over a little bit, towards the end or to catch your breath or whatever. Guys, when I was prepping for shows, and I did every session just like this, and I still burned body fat, still got ripped. So I think people, they try to be like, you know, warriors on this thing. Just do the, just go. It doesn't matter how. Uh, you want to stand up straight if you can, but if you have to bend over a little, catch your breath or whatever, like I said, it's perfectly fine. It's still gonna burn a ton of calories. It's still gonna burn fat. The idea is just to keep going and, uh, I like to do lists on this. You can also do hit, like I said. And one thing though, when you're doing this is with my steps, I'm thinking about each step. I'm pushing through my heels, squeezing my hamstring and glutes. So I'm not just stepping aimlessly. There's ever is a purpose for everything in the gym, including cardio. So when I'm stepping, I'm pushing through my heel, squeezing my hamstrings and glutes. And this is good, you know, be a great leg workout too. It's not gonna build your legs, but it's gonna help define your legs a little. It'll help burn more fat off your legs. So, Stairmaster, treadmill, my two favorite forms for cardio. Okay, that's my abs, calves, and cardio routine. Like I said, you know, abs, calves, you can hit them. It's a muscle you can hit more frequently because it's smaller. You're not gonna pound it with a ton of sets every workout. Uh, I'll hit them each two or three times a week. And then cardio, always do that cardio first thing in the morning or immediately post-workout. If this video helped you out at all, like, comment, subscribe. Peace, thanks for watching.